be straightforward, through the span of these squints, what number of warnings, messages, and messages do you think you will get? Odds are there may be many. The inquiry is, how will that sway your comprehension of these squints? In all likelihood, you'll be less engaged and presumably miss a portion of the subtleties. During a time where innovation is advancing at a pace we could have once just longed for, we should procure the aptitudes and capacity to concentrate on each undertaking in turn in our everyday work without interference. We should figure out how to rehearse profound work. I'm not catching that's meaning and how might it be accomplished? First of all, you would be wise to kill your notices and afterward, you'll discover. Chapter 1 Performing multiple tasks and interruption are the foes of efficiency. Many individuals believe that doing huge amounts of things without a moment's delay is the most gainful utilization of their time, however, this rationale is dead off base. That is because performing various tasks doesn't rise to efficiency. Sophie Leroy, a business teacher at the University of Minnesota who directed research on this wonder in 2009, shows why. She exhibits that when changing from task A to task B, our consideration remains joined to the main action, which implies we can just half concentrate on the second, which harms our presentation. Her investigations use two gatherings, Bunch A chipped away at word puzzles until she interfered with them to go on to understanding resumes and settling on speculative contracting choices. Group B found workable pace baffles before proceeding onward to the resumes. In the middle of the two errands, Leroy would give a fast test to perceive what number of catchphrases from the riddles were as yet stuck in the members' psyches. The outcome? Gathering A was substantially more centered around the riddle and accordingly less centered around the significant errand of contracting the ideal individual. The bottom line? Performing multiple tasks is a whole lot of nothing for efficiency. Nor is in effect electronically associated constantly. Indeed, while it may appear to be innocuous to keep online networking and email tabs open in your internet browser, the unimportant certainty of seeing things spring up on your screen is sufficient to wreck your center, regardless of whether you're not quickly tending to warnings. For example, a recent report by the counseling firm McKinsey found that the normal specialist spends more than 60% of the week's worth of work utilizing on the web specialized instruments and surfing the web with only 30% dedicated to perusing and noting messages. Despite this information, laborers feel like they're working like never before. That is because finishing little errands and moving data around causes us to feel occupied and achieved, yet it's in reality simply keeping us from genuinely centering. Chapter 2 There are various techniques for accomplishing profound work, all of which require expectation. So now you know a portion of the barriers that hinder profound work, however, how might you conquer them? While there's no all inclusive methodology, here are a couple of you may discover supportive. The first is the devout methodology. This methodology works by disposing of all wellsprings of interruption and confining yourself like a priest. The second is known as the bimodal methodology, which includes setting a characterized, significant stretch of segregation for work and leaving the remainder of your time free for everything else. The third is the cadenced methodology. The thought here is to shape a propensity for doing profound work for squares of, state, an hour and a half and utilizing a schedule to follow your achievements. Lastly, the journalistic methodology is to take any startling available time in your day-by-day -day schedule to do profound work. Yet, paying little heed to which system you utilize, it's vital to recollect that they're precise, not arbitrary. That is the distinction between being in the zone and profound work. All things considered, you get in the zone by some coincidence and regularly simply nightfall a dawdling. Then again, profound work is deliberate and wanted, which makes it fundamental to have ceremonies that set up your psyche for it. One custom may be to characterize your space. It tends to be as straightforward as setting a don't upset sign on your office entryway or heading off to a library or cafe. The last is particularly useful if you work in an open office. Simply take J.K. Rowling, who, while completing her last Harry Potter book, 
remained at a five-star lodging just to get away from her frenzied home condition and adapt to the weight so she could get into profound work. Another custom is to characterize limits, for instance, by separating the web or killing your telephone. Lastly, make your profound work supportable. Since, regardless of whether it's light exercise, nourishment, or a caffeine jolt of energy, it's fundamental to give your body what it needs if you need to center. On the off chance that you don't, you'll never have the psychological vitality you have to remain in profound work. Chapter 3, Center Your Mind and Be Particular About Your Utilization of Innovation Our minds have become used to needing interruption in the modern world. All things considered, wherever we look, individuals are stuck to their screens, messing around, informing or reviving their Facebook pages on rehash. The issue is that our cerebrums are wired to be effectively occupied. That is because, developmentally, these interruptions could present dangers or openings. Therefore, it's difficult for us to profoundly concentrate on one assignment. In any case, don't stress, profitable reflection can rework your mind and help you center. Here's how it works. Use minutes that would some way or another be ineffective, like strolling your pooch cleaning up or driving to work, to consider an issue you have to deal with without letting your psyche change subjects. To begin, ask yourself inquiries that distinguish various issues in taking care of a given issue. At that point, when you've handled a particular objective, ask yourself activity inquiries like, what do I have to achieve my objective? Consider it an in-your-face exercise routine for your mind that will help construct your core interest. It's likewise key to be aware of your aims when utilizing online networking and the web. For example, on the off chance that you use Facebook to stay in contact with companions, at that point use it to speak with them, yet additionally put forth an attempt, whenever the situation allows, to invest more energy with them face to face. Also, if you can't figure out how to do that, take a stab at going without any weaning period. Quit web-based social networking for 30 days and a short time later, ask yourself. Would the previous month have been that greatly improved with online networking in my life? Did anybody care that I quit utilizing it? If you answer no to both, surrender it for good. Be that as it may, on the off chance that you answer truly, at that point it's presumably for the best to come back to it. Chapter 4 Booking both work and spare time are fundamental to re-establishing vitality. At the point when you return home from work or getting things done throughout the day, regularly all you need to do is, well, nothing. Furthermore, for bunches of us, that implies having no fixed schedule vacancies where we need to finish undertakings. In any case, amusingly enough, we end up stuck in a similar schedule each night, we sit in front of the TV look through our telephones or gaze at our PCs. At that point, when it's at last time to hit the sack, we feel more worn out than when we returned home, leaving us exhausted of vitality for the following day. How might you maintain a strategic distance from that circumstance? By booking all that you do, you'll save time for being aware of how you spend it. Toward the beginning of each workday, Make a timetable that is separated into squares of in any event 30 minutes. Right now, we should set both work and individual assignments like time to unwind, gobble or make up for lost time with email. It's unavoidable that your calendar will change during the day, yet on the off chance that this occurs, simply adjust your squares. The thought isn't to carefully keep your agenda however to develop mindfulness about how you invest your energy. That implies it's likewise key to design your night times and ends of the week ahead so you can make a move toward explicit objectives. Along these lines, attempt to leave your work at the workplace, for example, by forcing restrictions and not browsing your email after a specific time. Thusly, you'll give your brain the space it needs to close down. At last. Arranging your night times and ends of the week around exercises other than those including the web can assist you with reviving your brain and body. Perhaps it's perusing, practice or simply some quality time with friends and family. Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World by Cal Newport Book Review 
Interruptions are wherever in the modern world where performing various tasks has become our default state and is executing our profitability. The uplifting news is we can assume back responsibility for our time by taking out interruptions and letting our minds centered around each assignment in turn.